All right, this is it. This is the last thing to get through before we all go and get our shamrock on. No, there's no breakout sessions. Two more sessions. I was... You're getting your shamrock on. I was planning a nap, all right? <laughs> all right. Make this interactive. We'll have time at the end for questions. We got some great feedback on this from the first session. I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. Are you saying something first or not? Nope. No? Okay. okay, welcome everybody. I'm so glad you're here for our individual giving session of Spectrum Unlock Your Potential. And first I just want to thank all of you for everything you've already been doing for the CF Foundation and to support research. It's great. Thank you so much. We're so happy you joined us here today for our cultivation event. I'm Julie Walsh. This is my husband, Dennis. And we're going to talk about why we joined with our local chapter to continue the fight for CF. A cultivation event is a gathering of people to tell them more about the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and the fantastic research that's being done in a way that causes them to have the desire to get involved. In other words, we want them to get excited about finding that cure for CF. Our connection with CF started with our grandson, Hayden. We were there at the hospital a couple of days after Hayden was born when they told us that he had CF. All I could think of was, no, we were just devastated. This little boy was so sweet and we just loved him so much. What could we do to help? We heard about the Great Strides Walk, so we decided that that would be a good way to start fundraising. We prayed that over the years, the expanded life expectancy would stay ahead of Hayden, and so far it has because of the progress being made by the CF Foundation. But that still isn't good enough. I want that ultimate cure. So as a grandma, I'm going to brag a little bit. Hayden is an intelligent, caring, healthy, active 15-year-old who loves sports, especially baseball. He's on the freshman baseball team. And he also plays basketball and tennis. He's awesome, and he has lots to offer this world. I'm sure you feel the same way about your awesome cf -er. So, you know, I'm always trying to think of new ways to help. Maybe you are too. So here's a way you can do that. Pass your passion for a cure on to your friends and contacts by getting them together for a cultivation event to learn more maybe a cocktail party, or a dinner, or just an informal get-together. Our goal is a long, healthy life for our grandson, Hayden, and all those with the app, and of course, that ultimate cure. I imagine that you feel the same way, that that's your same goal. So we hope you'll pass your passion to help on to others at a cultivation event of your own. Let's help all those with CF say, I used to have CF, but now I don't. So now I'd like to introduce Ruth Hahn, who is our Senior Development Director at our local CF chapter, Kentucky, West Virginia. She's our go-to person. Ruth? Thank you, Julie. And thank you, Dennis and Julie, for being such great teammates to our chapter. They've been involved with Great Strides, like they said, for about 16 years and have raised $200,000 in that time. That's just in Louisville. They also attend our dinner dances. Um, they have also hosted finest honorees in their home to share their story, and lots of other things they do for our chapter, so we're very appreciative. One of the things we do um, with our host for a cultivation event is we talk to them about people they'd like to invite. So typically, we'll work with them on the invitation list. Also, we'll work with our chapter board and our annual fund officer, as well as our um, individual giving officer to decide on a list of people to invite. When planning a cultivation event, we typically will also send out the invitation and keep a RSVP list of people that will be attending. We also um, put together the invitation and send it out, like I said, but we will include a giving card in each invitation so that way people that maybe can't attend the event can still give to the cultivation event. Now I'd like to introduce you to Angela Lynn, Senior Director of Individual Giving, who will talk a little bit about the foundation. Thanks, Ruth. 
And thank you, Dennis and Julie, um, for opening your beautiful home today, um, this afternoon, for this cultivation event. We're very grateful for your um, willingness to do this. And thank you all here for coming today, and thank you all online for joining us as well. Um, as Bruce said, my name's Angela Lynn. I'm an individual giving officer. Um, I've worked for uh, the foundation for about eight years. Um, I also am a CF mom. I have two boys and my younger son, Mike, has cystic fibrosis. He's a senior in high school and getting a little bit of senioritis. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's not a lot of work going on right now. Uh, but he's also a little bit nervous right now, too, because we're waiting on those last few college decision letters. So we'll ask us in about a month for a couple weeks where he's going. But um, at any rate, um, I want to thank you guys for um, being in this fight for so long. Mike is doing well. He started on Orcambi two and a half years ago. And as the docs like to say, he's had a better than average response. Um, he gained 20 pounds his first five months on the drug. It's amazing. Thank you. And uh, he also got a pretty good boost in his lung function. So um, we're very, very grateful because we know so many of you all have been involved for such a long time. Um, he uh, has been active with sports. He played baseball when he was really young. He's um, played a lot of tennis. And then about a year ago, a year and a half ago, he discovered a sport called Ultimate Frisbee, which I don't know if you guys know, um, but it really is a sport. They have semi-pro teams in some, uh, some cities, but they, it's, it's not like Frisbee golf. It's, a, it's not played on a football field, but they mark it off so it's a little more narrow. And they throw the Frisbee and they don't tackle, but they catch it. It's a lot of running, so it's good for the lungs. So I thought, okay, he's got this figured out. So when I went to one of the games, and I think I really figured out why he was interested in it, because the summer leagues are co-ed. <laughs> and so I think he had more in mind besides just chasing the Frisbee. So um, at any rate, uh, so that's Mike. So anyway, thank you very much. So what is individual giving? Um, individual gifts are, you've heard of annual fund, major gifts, plan giving, which we like to call legacy giving. Um, annual fund um, gifts are gifts under $10,000 that go straight to the mission. They're not tied with an event, um, just outright dollars. Major gifts are gifts of 10000 or more in a single calendar year or multi-year pledges. Um, when Preston introduced Joe O'Donnell last night, I think you may, you probably heard that um, uh, through Joe's leadership and the foundation and everybody's participation, uh, we raised $257 million um, in major gifts, which really helped accelerate um, uh, Kaleidico or Canby and the second generation. So um, we're grateful for that. And then legacy giving um, is when uh, someone um, includes a CF foundation in their plans, um, in their a simple uh, will or a simple request or something more complicated like a charitable remainder trust. But if, um, you know, that's some, for people who've been involved for a long time, um, that's something they may want to consider. Um, Trisha Benson heads our uh, planned giving efforts, and so she's fabulous at answering questions. As you know, our IGO, um, you can you know we can be a resource as well. But you know, talking with a financial planner is always a good idea. But at any rate, that's what individual giving is. So, what's an individual giving officer? What do we do? Um, sometimes we're called IGOs. Sometimes people may call us something else, but we prefer IGO. Um, so, um, IGO. So, we love to partner with the chapters, and we love to partner with with you all as volunteers and meet your friends. Um, our, one of our primary roles is really to steward and to say thank you and to share an update about what's going on with the foundation. Um, we kind of feel like we're a little bit of jack of all trades, maybe. Um, we um, like to talk about like what the docs talked about yesterday, or we talk about Compass or community partnerships, but at, at you know, a higher level, a broader level, um, and in layman's terms. Um, and so we try to be a resource to the chapters um, on that score. Um, so we do one-on-one -on -one meetings when we come to the chapters. Um, I'm going to be visiting uh, Charlotte in a few weeks, and I think Dee Dee's going to set me up to, this will be my first trip to Charlotte as the new IGO for that region and just to meet some folks. Um, and then um, we speak at annual meetings as well as board meetings and then cultivation events. I think over recent years, um, the IGOs have done uh, probably several hundred cultivation events, which is what we're kind of modeling a little bit today. But when we come and do the cultivation events again, we talk about what's going on with the foundation. Um, so uh, we also can help 
help you get a match um, or try and help with that. We can help with follow-up after a cultivation event. Um, just try to be a resource in any way we can to you. A couple of examples besides um, cultivation events for annual fund that we've done. I mean, just me personally, I can say last year I did a Great Strides kickoff party for 150 um, uh, friends of a CF grandma in Sarasota, and that was really fun. A lot, it was very fantastic. And then I also um, did a um, kickoff party for a chainsaw carving event in Gray, Georgia, which apparently is the second largest one in the country. Uh, and that was really a lot of fun. Um, so uh, we just need to, we, we need to continue, as you've heard, to fundraise um, and to keep things moving. We've obviously, um, the progress is fantastic and palpable but we're not there yet, so we need to keep on moving. We need to bring the second generation modulators forward. We need to bring things forward to deal with um, all the bad bugs. We need new, uh, that we're the big effort on anti-infectives um, for people who are struggling with NTMs, um, with Cepatia, with Pseudomonas, um, with MRSA, all these different things. We've got a big initiative on that, more anti-inflammatories, um, and we need to keep on moving for the people who are dealing with anxiety and depression, um, CF can be a very, very isolating disease. And we need to keep on moving forward for people who have had lung transplants because we need better long-term outcomes for those folks. Um, and I kept my, I've got my wristlet on, and um, our, my, what I'm thinking about this week is we need to keep on moving for the brave kids who are doing their treatments every day. And um, I guess lastly, we need to can keep on moving forward until we can have therapies for that last 5%, that final small slice of the pie. We've got to keep on moving for that until we have 100%, a, a one-time cure for 100% of folks with CF. And so basically, I think I'd like to say, I think we're all in until it's done. Thanks, Angela. Thanks to all of you for coming out this afternoon. Now, this is kind of our lull period in the afternoon, so I'll try and keep it interesting. But um, if, if you are snoring, my wife always gets mad at me when I snore, so please keep it qu quiet. I might come out and hit you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, I thought about yesterday, which was really an amazing day. And I, I kept coming back and thinking of all the research stuff and all the things that have been done. The only word I can think to describe it is amazing. I'm someone who usually has lots of words and can say lots of things, but I just I get stuck there because it is amazing. I'm going to quote Preston Campbell. He called it the most amazing story in medicine today. I mean, just think about that. Think of the impact of that. The most amazing story in medicine today. And guess what? It's because of all of us and what's been done and what we're going to do. So I think that's something that's important. This morning, we got a glimpse of the future, talking about where CF might go. And I'll tell you, I'm really charged up. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, but I'm the most charged up I've ever been about it. I'm going to share some thoughts on how we can help take this to the next level so we can make that future happen. That's one of my main goals today is to give you some ideas on, on stepping it up a little bit. First, though, I wouldn't be able to get by without telling you something about our involvement with CF. Julie told you about our grandson, Hayden. We're very proud of him, and I can spend a lot of time telling you why I call him my hero. But all of you are involved with CF, and you all have your own heroes, so I don't really want to dwell on that. But I do want to say that if this were an actual uh, cultivation event, I would spend a fair amount of time here telling you about Hayden and telling you about what his daily life is like and, and what, what CF patients have to go through just the beginning, just to exist. I sometimes have told people that I think it's like someone having to carry a 20-pound weight with them every place they go. It's just it's, it's an extra burden they have to put up with. So I realize you know, that we're all in this together, and I, I want to make sure that um, my dream, I'll tell you my dream first before I try to make sure. I'm, I mean, my dream is that Hayden will go to college, get married, have a family, and even become a grandparent. Soon after his birth, we realized we could not sit idly by. We had to do something to help eradicate this terrible disease. And we decided we could help by raising funds for CF research. 16 years ago, 
Julie and I walked in our first great strides. The next year, we decided to form Hayden's team and invite friends and colleagues to join us. Hayden's mom, Elizabeth, Elizabeth and dad, Todd, soon began a team in Atlanta and have expanded into a national team. We ask all of our friends and family to contribute and encourage them to form a Great Strides team in their city. Last year, there were six Hayden's teams walking in six cities with over 200 walkers. Passion events from bake sales to concerts have also been an important part of our fundraising efforts. But we wanted to do even more, so we made a gift to the Milestones 2 individual giving campaign. We've also made gifts to the annual fund, and last year we made the decision that we'd do a matching gift to help our chapter to encourage others to give and, and to expand our base of givers. The challenge we feel is to get more people involved. I think we're all wanting to do that. We do this by telling Hayden's story about CF, about CF itself, and about what Hayden goes through. And we've also been doing a lot of things that, you know, just, just, just help spread the word. I think that Hayden is in good health. He's actually, he's 15, almost 16 years old. He hasn't had a hospital stay. And, and I, I believe that he is doing so well because of the treatments and medicines that have been developed since he was born. So it, it, it's really kind of amazing when you think of that. I believe the research learning for CF is also blazing new trails that are helping advance research for other diseases. I like to tell people when I talk to them about giving that they're making an investment. They're making an investment in the future for all those with CF, and sometimes it's splashing over and helping some other diseases. I think the gene splicing is going to be a key example of that. So you don't have to be afraid to say, gee, give me money. Say, would you like to help me make an investment for the future? I, I'm, I'm letting the cat out of the bag. I'm 78 years old. And you know, some, th some days I think, oh my, I'm, I got my hip is bothering me a little, this is a problem, that's a problem. Um, maybe I won't be around too, long, too, around too much longer. But you know, I'm planning on being here a long time. And I want to be able to look back and say, I helped cure a disease. I helped cure CF. And you can do that too. The younger ones of you have a lot more time than me, but on the other hand, we're all doing it together, maybe we can make it. <laughs> So I, I wanted to just, you know, make that point and underscore it for you. But now the next question is, what can you do to help? How can you help make this happen? And I think if you'd consider having a cultivation event as host or by attending a chapter sponsored event, spread the word about CF and the progress that has been made toward finding a cure. People want to invest in winners, and we have a great story to tell. If you haven't done it yet, get to know your chapter executive director and other staff members, plus your individual giving officer. They are good resource people who are working very, very hard to find a cure for CF. I challenge each of you to consider joining Julie and me in individual giving as a way to take CF research to that next level. This could be done by one or more of the following. Make a personal gift to the annual fund. And when I say that, it sounds, sounds like an awesome, um, big, big thing to jump. But in reality, a gift to the annual fund is from ten dollars to $10,000. Two Starbucks coffees, you're in for a year. <laughs> so just, just think about doing that. Um, talk to your chapter people about it and um, see, see if you can't maybe expand it on to some of your friends and family. Uh, make a major gift. If you're, if you're in a position to do that, gifts of $10,000 or more really help to jumpstart things. And lastly, as you think about your will and what you want your legacy to be, think about putting the CF Foundation in your estate plan. I want to thank each of you for all you do to support CF and to help make it stand for Cure Found. My hat is off to each of you. Now Angie Kinney is going to take over and 
uh, do, do her magic. <laughs> I'm not sure what she's going to do. Here. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Julie. How awesome are they, right? Isn't that amazing? And that was just, you know, a little brief introduction to, to the main pieces of a cultivation event and how simple it really is to roll out. So thanks, guys. We really appreciate that. And that helps us kind of visualize, you know, at a chapter level, how we can kind of roll that out. My name is Angie Kinney, and I, I'm the annual fund chair back in Pittsburgh for the Western Pennsylvania chapter. I've got two kids with CF, a 23-year-old and um, a 19-year-old. And um, my 23-year-old my just texted me while we were sitting up here. I have to share this because you're family. Um, that she just took her first um, dose of Simdigo. Like, literally, as these guys were talking, she sent me a picture of the box and the punch out. The first dose is in her body. So, yeah, fun. Um, so, anyway, yeah, so thanks so much for being here. Hopefully, some of you, you know, this is a big deal that you're here because this is the time of day we all want a pillow. And, and how awesome are we that we're, you know, we're still working and talking about really important things. So, um, we'd like to, we hope some of you caught the individual, Paul's individual giving session yesterday which I hear was amazing. Um, and we're going to kind of expand on some of the concepts that were introduced there and talk a little bit about the spectrum of donor relationships. And what we love about this is, I mean, really think about this. This is when you're thinking about how you cultivate donors or, or any supporters in your CF world, for that matter, it always follows this sort of cycle. And, you know, you're already doing this even if you're not thinking about it in this way. It is always a repeat. You know, you're always working to educate and cultivate people and bring them into our fold in different ways, small ways, big ways. You're thanking them. You're bringing back th them back in again. It's a constant flow. It goes backwards. It goes forward. Um, and just to put a little thought into this and, and make it... Uh, you know, put some thought into each step really changes the game, I think, for you at a chapter level sometimes as far as help. And it also kind of demystifies the process, which is um, what we want to talk about. So identifying prospects. This is the stage of kind of gathering information. And, you know, in this whole cycle, it's maybe 20% of the process, 20% um, of your time to be spent on this. And we recommend that you kind of look at it in two different ways. You know, what, what are the key programs and, and ideas and thought processes is about our mission really get you going, really get you excited. You know, you heard Dennis talking about what he's riled up about, you know, like that's, if he expresses that, people give to people and, and that's where his passion is. So it also kind of helps you gear who you might want to target from an individual giving standpoint. Um, when you think first about what, where your passions lie, and there are so many things, and Angela already introduced them all. You know, you could be thinking, it could be really important to you, maybe our... our our newest focus on mental health, or maybe it's the science or the acceleration, or maybe it's your kids' mutations. Maybe it's that 5% that we're all so fired up about fixing um, that you really want to bring home to people. Maybe it's advocacy or the lung transplant program or just a focus on an increase in focus on research for infections because, you know, no matter what we do, if we're not fixing that piece, we, we're back at square one. So there's lots to be fired up about. Know where your heart is, where your head is, what you love to talk about. And think about your own contact list and who you know and the different realms of people you know. Um, and start thinking about how they kind of fit into our cycle of um, involving them in, in cystic fibrosis, whether it's inviting them to an event or whether it's potentially um, sending letters or whether it's your social media information that you're putting out there. All those pieces are part of the educate, cultivate. You know, and, and invite, once you've in, pulled somebody into your Great Strides team and bring them to oh, your wine event, let the mission moment do the work for you. You know, continue to educate and inspire and move from there. Um, it, all those methods is, is what we think of when we talk about educate, um, you know, and cultivate and involve. You'll see that in your folders we have this all printed up for you in a nice little cycle of information. And this is something you can take home and you can look at and you can feed your thoughts and your ideas right through this system. And it helps sort of steer you through the process. And for today, you can see you can take notes on the back when you're thinking about your own contacts, which is exciting. 
Um, you know, cultivation kind of rolls out in different ways. You know, sometimes it's um, being invited to a chapter event, but sometimes it's as simple as a note. But what, whatever you do, always be ready for it with an elevator speech. Already be, always be ready to talk about what makes you passionate about CF, of course, because that's people give to people. Um, so this stage kind of sort of informs all the other stages of the process of the cycle. And I would say it's really about 50% of your effort should be focused on this area of bringing people along through the system and through the inspiration system, you know, as we say. Um, and that kind of moves us on to the, the, the official solicitation stage, which is, you know, the art of the ask. Um, and this is maybe the place where people start feeling most uncomfortable. Or one of the things that we struggle with, I think, as you know, volunteer leaders who have, do a lot and ask a lot, you know, people do struggle with, oh, I just don't, I just can't ask again, or I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And I think, um, to me, personally, the art of the ask starts with your perspective on the ask. You need to have it in your heart from the get-go that it is a gift to be able to change the world by what we're doing, because we are, and saving lives. And to be able to give someone else the opportunity and to do whatever it takes for you to figure out how you need to express that so that they get it, give them the opportunity to change the world, I mean, that's just magic. You know, it's magic. And you have to have your head in that spot or you're not going to be able to be who you need to be, you know, to make that ask successful. Um, so to me, that's the beginning of it. And then from there, it's very different depending on what, what you're asking for, how large it is. Is staff involved? Is it a personal ask? Are you starting with annual fund? Are you moving somewhere else? All these decisions can actually be thought of in a process and planned out and, and should be a team effort between... Um, you and your and your executive director. So what we'd like to do is maybe play a little game and give you guys an opportunity to talk at your tables as a region um, and sort of brainstorm on these steps. Now, remember, you're not going to get all that far into the steps, but it's the, the point is talk, start putting things down on paper, work through it, and, and commit to continuing to have this conversation at home. And it would be just so exciting to see where that ends up. So we want to introduce you, and as you all know this as well, but these are the different areas of your life where you may find that you never thought about it before. You know, people that would, could be t potential donors, potential givers for the individual giving program. Um, so we want each table to sort of focus on a different group. And w how we're going to do that is I have my own Vanna Hodge, who's... <laughs> is going to spin our wheel. <laughs> um, so what we'd like to do, isn't he cute? He looks just like her. No. All right, this one's for the people at home. Yes, people at home. Uh, grandparents. People at home there, you can think about how the way should engage grandparents. Who's next? Okay, so then we're going to go kind of by... Uh, section here are, uh, let's start with Gia, our Northeast region. Gia, there she is back there. Everybody say uh, hi. She's our individual giving. Kids, teams, and groups. So soccer teams, that kind of thing. That's a good one. That's a great one. Because they're that always is a great involved. One. Great. Okay. And Fran, where's Fran? We have Franny there, Senior Director for uh, Mid-Atlantic Region. Okay. You Yay. Got, you got grandparents as well. That's good. Okay. And, and feel and welcome to move tables if you find see one you really want to do. True. Um, the southeast region. Friends. Friends. Thank you, Angela. We have the mid south region with Brian. There's to Brian. To social media. How can you engage your social media to address these things? Get your social media on. on. Okay, southwest region, Melody. Melody. Where's Melody? There's Melody. Work colleagues. Work colleagues. There we go. That's a good one. Okay, and the West Region, Amy. That's a long spin. Dana. He's trying to get it this right. time. Don't You're look just at it. You'll go crazy. <laughs> Don't keep hitting it. It'll ah, keep spinning. Yeah. Religious groups. <laughs> Little divine intervention right there. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we have a Midwest region. 
Amanda? Oh, that's right. Very good. Uh, extended family. Extended family. Okay. Did we cover every group, every region? Do you have homework? All right. We're going to give you about 15 minutes, and we'll give you a warning when we're wrapping up. Feel free to use the big boards that you see next to your tables to brainstorm and have fun. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. I sat in on the... Um, Mid-Atlantic region conversation, and they're having a brilliant discussion back there about grandparents. I didn't want to leave it. So no doubt all of your tables had great conversations, and our hope for you today is that um, maybe we're demystifying the process a little bit to be able to plug some of your thoughts into this process. It's pretty exciting, and we really hope you go home and you continue it. Um, we would we have to complete the process of talking about this because we need to move on to some very important pieces of the puzzle. Um, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Peter Hodge, who's our national uh, chair for the annual fund, for some thoughts. Hey, everybody. Are we all back? Are we all back here? <laughs> all right, great. Thank you, uh, Angie. Um, we're going to talk about the last two pieces on your chart here, which is, first of which is saying thank you. And I've got to tell you, I'm a little nervous about doing this, because I've got my boss in the room, Chris Lanshute, right here, who's the executive director from our office with over 32 years, Chris? 32 years with the foundation. And if you want a master class in how to say thank you, you should just chat to Chris, because she is the absolute best at it. I'm sure I'll get my report card from you later, Chris, on this. <laughs> so look, saying thank you, right? It's easy, right? Thank you. It's easy. The truth about saying thank you is none of us do it well at all. We should be spending 20% of our time thinking about how to say thank you, what are the right words to use, what's the right message, and I'll tell you why, and it's really easy. So uh, I'm in business development, have been for 30 years as a professional, and there's one statistic that we know for sure, that is the, the first sale from a new customer costs you a hundred times to get that sale as the second, if you keep the relationship. And this is exactly the same with donations, all the effort and the time and the energy that you put into getting that first gift from somebody, why would you throw that away by not following up, by not doing the right things afterwards? So we think about 20% of your time in this process related to bringing people in and asking for them to invest in our mission here should be around the art of the thank you. Um, I got a great statistic for you here, which is that if you thank somebody within 24 hours of them giving a gift, they are almost 40% more likely to give another gift than if you didn't thank them. So think about that for a moment. A simple thank you to somebody within proximity of them actually giving the gift makes them 40% more likely to give a gift again. That's a crazy statistic, right, for something that is so easy to do and something that we all kind of put off, right? Oh, I got the address in my email. I'll get to that. I'll do it at the weekend. Oh, man, I wish I'd done that. Right? We've all been there. I know I have. So let's talk about just a couple of simple ways that we can say thank you more effectively. Um, Chris knows this because she always gets the email from me after an event where well, we have a great bid, and I say to Chris, can you send me the list of people who donated over a number, let's say $1,000, and I will write a handwritten thank you card to them. Who gets a thank you card in the mail anymore? Nobody gets thank you cards in the mail. It's not a big anything, it's just a thank you. And I can guarantee you that the next year that I'm at that same event, somebody who got one of those cards is going to come and thank me for the opportunity for them to give us their money, which is exactly where we want things to be. It's powerful, right, Chris? It works, for sure. Hey, I got another example for you here. When we were up on the hill on Thursday, I was going around with a young family from Orlando, 
And um, she was handing out this little booklet that she had made. This is her son, Tobin. And this little packet had these three little postcards in it with just some statistics about Tobin. And there's a little pocket that said thank you on the back. How cool is that, right? We should all have something like this that is yours, that you made, that fits for who you are. Get a box of them. I'm sure things like Snapfish or Web dot whatever. <laughs> you know, you could probably order a thousand of these for 50 cents each, right? Figure some out, you know, go order some, have a box sitting on your desk. And when you want to make that thank you, then you don't have to put it off because it's right there on your desk. And if you want to see that later, I'll leave it up here for you. Um, something else that, that I've done very recently is that we all have milestones in our life that come up. My oldest daughter just turned 25. That's a milestone in CF, right? And so you, you have these milestones. You have first day in kindergarten, 16th birthday, 25th. Um, you know, um, Paul's daughter got married two years ago. You know, we have these milestones that are big milestones for regular people. They're unbelievable milestones for our families. I went back through everybody I could find who's ever donated time, money, effort to when I have told them the story about my girls. I sent a simple email out to them, which I'll share with you here, actually. I said, friends, my daughter Olivia turns 25 today. Quite a milestone, but mostly for me, I think, as it reminds me that time marches on and my AARP application is sitting unopened on the coffee table. I wanted to thank each of you for all the tomorrows that you've added for Olivia. For some of you, it's been more than 25 years, and others are new to the fight. We're working hard to give us those tomorrows that are yet to come. I'm deeply grateful for all the hard work, sacrifice, and commitment that you have and will make to the mission to treat and ultimately cure cystic fibrosis. And for the next 25 years <laughs> with Olivia that it's given us. And that's it. It's, it's a very powerful, very simple email. And I can't tell you how much response I had from that. And it took me a couple of hours to put my list together, a couple of hours to come up with the right words to send. Every single one of us in this room has moments once or twice a year that are special like that and special to the people who donate to us. You know, we can send medical updates out all we want. Most people won't read them, won't understand them. A heartfelt message from a parent about the love of a child, that's how you draw people in. That's how you say thank you to people. We, um, the next step, is how do we involve people more deeply? Because that diagram is a circle. It keeps going on and it keeps going on. And the idea that you can take this first donation from somebody and grow it into something different, um, I think you may have heard Angie use a, a phrase that I love yesterday, which is that you know how many seeds are inside an apple, but you have no idea how many apples are inside a seed. You need to practice that if you're going to use it, by the way, because you can get... <laughs> there's, no, there's seeds, and there's apples, and there's... Ah! <laughs> but um, I want to give you a, 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 an amazing example of this. And it's a story about um, a young woman who, a long time ago, 1965 to be exact, she was a young girl who just started high school, and uh, she found out that a little boy in her neighborhood had cystic fibrosis. Now, there was a parent there somewhere who was doing exactly what we do, telling the story, hoping, not understanding, planting seeds, maybe not knowing where they're all going to go. But this young woman decided she was going to do something, so she went to school, she formed a club with her friends, and they called it the Conquerettes. 
which is a brilliant name, right? I want to be in the Conquerettes. We need to bring that back. Look, I'm going to fast forward 50-something years since then. She's raised tens of millions of dollars. She's been to thousands of events. She's been a board trustee for the last 30 years. This is an orchard. This is a giant orchard of fruit that grew from that single seed of an idea. And not only that, but we're honored to have Sue Hook in the room with us right here. Extraordinary. What an extraordinary example of that idea at work, right? Could be the next person that you say thank you to that motivates them to want to do something else. How, how else can we do that? Um, you know, there are, um, here's a couple of other great statistics for you as well, actually. This idea of not just saying, come do great strides, and then you go back to somebody a year later and say, hey, come do great strides again, but building this ongoing dialogue. If you can get somebody to make more than one gift in a year, let me put this the other way. People who make multiple gifts in a year are 61%. We have 61% retention rate, meaning somebody makes two gifts in a year, there's a 61% chance they're going to come back and make gifts the next year. If somebody only makes a single gift to the foundation, the retention rate, meaning they'll make a gift next year, is only 25%. That's crazy, right? What does it tell you? It tells you that we do a terrible job, personally, because it's our job to do this, at engaging with people who have made that donation. And this should be the easiest part, because it's the thank you, not the ask. It's just the thank you. So we all got up our game on that, all right? Hey, here's a good one for you as well. So we have, in the um, individual giving program, we have this sustainer part of it now, which means people can donate monthly, which is fantastic. So think about it. It's the same amount of effort for somebody to go online and donate $100, or you could ask them to go online and just say, hey, just do $10 a month, which actually isn't $100, but it's fine. <laughs> Probably not figure it out. But... Here's the fact about sustainers, people who give monthly. On average, they give 42% more than the person who just makes that one-time gift. So if you've got somebody you've convinced to invest in our mission, why not just ask them one of the things? Say, hey, you know, I can make this easier for you. Why don't you just do it monthly? We'll just take that 20 bucks out of your paycheck every month. You won't even notice it. Think about it, that's a good one. If you want more detail on that, just ask your uh, IGO. So I'm gonna tell you another story about how involving somebody, getting them more involved. One idea we do, and Chris has done a masterful job down with us in Fort Lauderdale on this, we took our board out to the um, care center and invited other people around. That ties people in, it makes it real for them. That's something you can really do. And then they come back and they ask you, what more can I do for you? I'm going to tell you this story about an uh, extraordinary young woman who um, came to one of our events. Uh, her name's Heather Geronimus. She was down in Port Lauderdale with us. <coughs> came to one of our events, became a finest, got on the committee. Chris is like, and you know how EDs are, like Chris is like, ooh, what else can we use her for, right? <laughs> So then we got her to chair one of our bigger events, and then Chris called me and she's like, I think we should take Heather for lunch and see if she'll come on the board. And I'm like, all right, Chris. So we go for lunch, and um, Heather tells her story something like this. She says, she says um, yeah, I can't really say no to you and Chris, could I? But it was interesting because although she'd been around us for a long time, she joined not knowing enough about the mission, she knew about me. She knew about my girls. She joined for them. Each of you have that power in you with your motivation. People will do this for you. And by extension, all of us. Heather um, called us up six months ago now and she says, hey, I've got a new partner and he has a family um, foundation. I think we should go have lunch with him. 
I'm, I'm, I'm blaming this on Heather, by the way. <laughs> um, so we went and met with, with her um, new partner, and we sat and listened to him and asked him what was important to him. And he said, well, you know, I want to invest in something that accelerates science. So we came back and we came into the foundation. We found this awesome project, which is the um, genome project, genome sequencing project. And we said, hey, here's this great project. This is how much it's going to cost. And he came back and gave us a $150,000 matching grant, which we're just about to finish off. Right, Chris? Yeah. So that all came with this idea of taking you know, Heather from just going to an event all the way through to this point. So all you guys have the ability to do that. Like I'm going to finish up here with you by, um, by saying thank you in the only way that I know how to say it, and that is directly from my heart to yours. I, um, when I first joined this fight, I thought it was my job, me, Peter Hodge as a dad. It was my job to cure this disease. And it took me a while, but I realized that I could never, ever put enough tomorrows in the jar on my own. It takes all of us, every single one of us, every single person you touch with your stories and your thank yous to make that happen too. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the conference.